it's amazingly smooth, it's a polished surface. Brilliant. I made myself some thickness calipers. These are essential tools for luthiers and everybody, everybody should have thickness calipers. Very useful for measuring the thickness of boards. These are very expensive. They, they retail for, I think, £200, maybe more. And these I managed to build for £13.50. This is how I did it. This is my dial. I got it second hand for just £10. New, new ones start at about £25, but I doubt whether a new one at that price range would, would be quite the quality of this. This has got a beautifully smooth operation. Each rotation of the dial is one millimetre, so the resolution of this is 0.01 for each little tick. The thing wrong with this though is it's missing all of its associated hardware. There's no clamp, there's no probe. Uh, you, you would have, a, I, I guess, a range of probes that go in the end and uh, there's quite often a trigger mechanism that just clips under there just to raise up the jaws when you want to measure. First thing to do is to recreate the probe that used to go in here and this screw illustrates the sort of thing we need. There's about 11 millimeters of travel in this and this screw gives about 9 millimeters so we need something a little bit longer so I've, I've marked off 10 centimeters on here. Now the internal diameter of this measures with my calipers at about 5.8 a little bit more maybe 5.9 and the external diameter of this happens to be six millimeters so we're not far off in fact if I measure it in the right place it often measures 5.8 and 5.9 I was measuring this earlier as 5.8 there 5.86 in fact that measurement is exactly what I was measuring for the in inside diameter of this but of course it won't quite go. So I'm hoping that there isn't much to take off here, just a, a thin slither of metal that I can just sand away. Uh, I don't know how much effort's going to be involved in this, but let, let's try sanding before we get to more radical measures. realizing what a rough piece of metal this is there's some real big pits in this so uh, let's just go a little bit uh, coarser to begin with actually there we go I don't think I've taken much more than 0.1 of a millimeter off but that's now sliding quite smoothly So time to polish it. I'll start with 240 grit and work my way up. <laughs> the battery's going. I've been using this for about an hour and uh, I've <laughs> I think an hour is all that this drill can take. It's not a, it's an old drill, it's, it's not a, a lithium, it's a NICAD. two probes for the bottom and the top and this one fits nicely inside. There is some movement, could have made it thicker I think. The polishing step I think has taken off a little bit more than I anticipated but that's fine. This is a beautifully smooth movement. <laughs> Now 
now got the dilemma of how to drill through here to accommodate the, the gauge and the bottom stop. I need a, a 9mm hole, or 0.1mm under that really, but 9mm hole for that and a 6mm hole for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a spacer, a cardboard spacer, in the middle to try and pack it out to about 1mm. Drill through and then without the spacer it will then clamp tight around the shaft. It's just the drill to use. I have no choice with 9mm, that's the only drill I've got, a brad point drill. I have no idea what these are like through perspex. Um, these HSS drills for the 6mm, I know they tend to bind. I don't know whether I can just uh, ease it in with the pillar drill with it well clamped down and avoid that, or whether I need to drill a series of progressively larger pilot holes. Mm, we'll see. I think the fact that I'm drilling down between two pieces is a slightly different case, and I have no idea how this is going to go, so um, let's find out. Before I drill edgeways through this, I'm going to put the two clamp holes in there. I'm using 25mm bolts, um, so that I can then bolt it together so that it's all held securely when I drill through and everything's in the right place. I did think about doing pilot holes, but <laughs> I would have to re-clamp every time to change the, the drill, so I'm just going to go for it in, in one go. So let's get this clamped. There it is. Now it gets awkward because I want to drill it while bolted and I've got to clamp it, so a <laughs> piece of wood with a hole in it that's going to go that way, get it lined up, and I think the only way I'm going to be able to clamp this is by clamping directly over the bolt. Gonna, I have the shim in the middle, which is three thicknesses of cardboard. We'll drill the requisite hole through, and then without the cardboard, it should all tighten up around the shaft of the two items. This time I'm going with a pilot hole. This is a 3mm pilot hole for a 6mm drill. Let's try it. That was easy, but that was mostly cardboard. Now the 6mm drill. I think I've got this lined up to see how it goes. I wish this was smelly vision, because the smell every time I work the uh, the vacuum cleaner is amazing, because it's it was used to uh, hoover up all the bay, bay tree dust and the aromatic smell from the bay wood, it's amazing. Moment of truth. If we remove the lumps of cardboard. If we, if we remove that, the cardboard has stuck itself to the perspex. I'll deal with that later. Um, without the cardboard, this should all come back together tighter than six millimeters. So the idea is, push that through. Oh yeah, I can feel it already. These bolts are a fraction short, really, but 
I guess we've just gained a bit of length. Oh no, they're fine. And then we tighten up the bolts. And we've got a really tight grip. Perfect. <laughs> that's just hand tight and I can't move that. So that's exactly what we want. Lovely. Now the second one, again a three millimeter pilot hole. I don't know how this is gonna work, but I'm gonna go straight in with a nine millimeter drill. Here goes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, rethink. Okay, six and a half millimeter twist drill. Let's do that first. I don't know where I'm going with this. Maybe to my eight and a half mil, and then we'll see if that, see if the eight and a half mil is big enough. Eight and a half millimeter. This is a little bit on the sharp side. Need to have a look at that, see what's happened. Everything seems to be okay. I've had a look in there, there's nothing broken. Um, the perspex is in one piece. Um, this is very sharp and it's just grabbing at the perspex. A piece of advice I received after one of my previous videos is to blunt the drill. But I've bought this 8.5mm drill for another purpose and the last thing I want to do is blunt it. Um, huh. I, I think I was possibly getting a little bit confident and going in too quickly. I'm just going to try and just gently tease it in and see how we go. I just want to see that it's not getting too hot. That's not going too badly. It's just being very, very careful and just easing it in. I'm curious to see what happens if I go in with the uh, nine millimeter brad point, because I'm only half a millimeter away, surely it can't do too much damage. <laughs> oh dear. I don't know, I've, of course I've had to move the platform to put the drill in, so I don't know whether I've got it exactly in the right place, but we'll give it a go. Well, I got there. That seemed to go really well. seems perfect. I could have actually used less cardboard because it's quite a gap there but um, there's, uh, that's really snug. I can move it but obviously I haven't I've only finger tightened, tightened it. So brilliant. Now I just need to drill a couple of holes and attach it to the aluminium frame. I just need to show you after all the fun and games trying to drill this hole the quality of the inside surface of that hole is amazing. You don't normally get to, to look at the quality of your holes from the inside, but that's as smooth as can be. I don't know whether it's because the drill got a little bit hot maybe and started melting it back, but um, it's amazingly smooth. It's a polished surface. Brilliant. It is hot in here and uh, this is hard work.
Yay! Right, I'm going to go and lie down. coming together. I've got my three thicknesses of plywood. I've just taped them together. I'm not going to glue them um, because I can add extra ones in or take ones out. And I'm hoping that um, this is going to be rigid enough at this end that we're not going to get too much wobbling affecting the measurement. I'm going to bolt these together really tightly. So we've now got to drill the holes out. Back to the drill press. I'm just wondering how I'm going to clamp this, but maybe I'll just use this block underneath here, maybe. Hopefully I'll be able to just drill straight through all three components. Let's see. I actually can't go all the way through because the drill is perhaps just long enough, but the throw on the drill press is only 50 millimeters, and it's not far enough to go through, but at least it will put a marker in the bottom piece of wood and I'll be able to drill that out separately so let's give it a go. I think I say let's give it a go quite a lot. Oh well. That's as far as I can drill so uh, Hopefully that went down into the third one, so it will mark where I can carry on drilling, having taken the top layers off. So those little victories, V for victory, when you realise that your drill press is set up well enough that you can take one of them out the middle and they still mate up perfectly. Phew! <laughs> Although it is possible they're both twisted in the same direction, I think. Is that possible? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. They're, um, they seem to mate up okay. So I can take one of the blocks away and carry on and join it all up. I guess the only way I'm going to be able to drill straight through both pieces, because obviously I want to keep these nicely aligned, I guess the only way I'm going to be able to do that is take another block out. And do it that way. I can take these together like this and then get them back on the drill press without disturbing anything. <laughs> mm. And hopefully that will keep everything in place while I drill through. And if I use this block here to hold everything above the deck, hopefully we can do that. I've got one bolt in and I'm hoping this is the final really tricky bit and it will fit together perfectly and in line. It's worked. I've got a nicely aligned contraption. So now I just have to get these drilled up and we're done. Let's see how precariously it was clamped. <laughs> <laughs> this has been very precarious trying to keep this lined up. But I think I got there. I think the way I'm going to use this is clamped in the vise. 
having it vertical like this takes out any movement due to gravity of the arms and uh, but there, there isn't much movement when you hold it but at least this way it kind of uh, eliminates it altogether so what I've got here I think I've got it roughly zeroed well maybe not there we go that's zero and let's measure this that's about well it's as close as you can get one millimeter thick really obviously you've got to have it orientated the right way maybe just a smidge over one millimeter and if I measure it with these it comes out as one millimeter so that's good result thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video click like subscribe share the video it all helps me produce these so i'll see you in the next one bye